Good morning. Good morning. And I'm Commander Rob Middleton, and I work in the Force Division now for the Albuquerque Police Department. And welcome to the second annual Bill Daniels True Blue Award. Uh, Bill Daniels is going to be, uh, his bio will be read here in a minute by Linda Childers, but he was an honorable man. And he lived his life and he worked his entire career based on ethical principles. And he led his biz businesses on such things like character, leadership, and service to the community. These awards uh, given today to three very well-deserving officers are also based on ethical principles. And those are things like fairness, accountability, transparency, trust, respect, integrity, viability, and rule of law. So first of all, I'm gonna introduce the mayor of the city of Albuquerque, Mayor Tim Keller, and he's gonna open this up and we'll get this started. So thank right. you, sir. Thanks. Well, good morning, uh, APD and friends and family, uh, folks from uh, all of our, our uh, civilian police academy as well. And, uh, and cadets. And so I want to share a little bit about the importance of this award and where we're at as a police department. But uh, I, can't, I can't help but just pause for a minute. How awesome is it to see that sea of light blue out there? So thank you guys for answering the call. And we'll talk a lot more later, but uh, this, is, this is like the happiest scene I've seen in a long time. So I'm just appreciating it. And so special that you're here with us today because you get to see three outstanding examples of officers in our great department. And we're going to hear about their bios later. I don't want to sort of spill that uh, too early and about what they've done, both big and small, to make our city better and our department better. But I also want to share this. You know, for as long as at least several years, if not way before then, our city continues to ask more and more of our law enforcement professionals. And that's something that is unfortunate. It's a reflection of where we're at as a city in terms of crime. But also, it means it's more and more important that we as a community come together and appreciate the work that everyone does every day and the officers who go above and beyond. And that's what this ceremony is all about. For us, hopefully as your mayor, we are making some changes with respect to how we are building our department uh, the reinforcements that we are excited about on the way. Also, of course, our new collective bargaining agreement, which is very exciting. So we are trying to do what we can to step up and build a department uh, that can actually deal with all the issues facing our city, but also respect and honor the officers on an everyday basis, whether it's with respect to how folks are treated, whether it's respect to trust in the community, even our reputations in the public. Officers do so much, and they are unfortunately recognized not nearly enough by the public, and that's why I want to thank the Daniels Foundation for really doing this, because uh, we need to share every story with the public, and there are so many good stories and so many good things that our officers do every day, and we're so fortunate that you've been able to help shine a light on a few officers each year, including this year, that make our department truly special. So we have lots in store. We have lots coming with respect to uh, hopefully some reinforcements and also to um, you know really treating our officers the way they should be treated and continuing to acknowledge the good work that everyone does each day. So with that I'm going to hand it over to our uh, now confirmed and fully in place Chief of Police uh, who's going to tell us more about these individuals. Thank you so much. Before the chief comes up here, I'd like to introduce the president and CEO of the Daniels Fund, Linda Childers. Thanks, Commander. It is a pleasure for us to be here. It is awesome to see you guys. You look fabulous. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be part of this ceremony. I'll tell you a little bit about Bill Daniels. Several of us here work at the Daniels Fund, which was Bill Daniels' foundation that he left when he passed away. We work in Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Utah. But Bill was a naval aviator, and he flew in two wars. And through that experience, he gained an incredible appreciation for what it means to put your life on the line every day for others. So he had enormous respect for law enforcement first responders, and we carry that tradition forward at the Daniels Fund. So we're very, very proud and pleased to be part of this today to help honor three amazing officers. 
I don't think it'd be a surprise to most of you, but it's hard to find these stories because these officers are so humble, they don't want the stories told. So you have to help us find these neat stories and recognize these amazing people. So I will sit down and say congratulations to officers Joachim, Martinez, and Posha for the recognition they're about to receive. So Chief Geyer. Thank you, Linda. Um, I want to offer thanks to our mayor for the support he's given our police department. I think the size of this class is indicative of where we're going with the department. And thanks to the efforts of City Hall, we have a good, good team here in, in working toward to collectively to address crime and all the other issues in our city. Linda, we met yesterday. Uh, we learned some good things about what your organization does, and we had some great discussions. I appreciate that you guys doing this for us as well. Um, as chief, you know, one of the best things I get to do is when we recognize officers. I mean, we always have the other side of the job as well, but we know our officers do their best, look, best work when no one's looking. Um, you know, at 3 in the morning when you're out there, there isn't a lot of publicity or news cameras or, or any type of things to capture everything our officers do. And, and these are just three of the stories. And I'm so proud of all our officers that do the work every day. And these two are just, these two examples here are just, you know, the epitome of what we do every day and what we expect you new officers to be as you go forward in your careers. Uh, you're going to have role models in your field training officers and your academy instructors, um, other fellow officers that you work with. But what you hear today and what you see, if you can emulate and use those as, you know, your mentors as you go through your careers, I guarantee you, you'll be successful. So with no further ado, we're going to start recognizing the officers. I'll read a little bit about uh, how they got here today or why they're being recognized. So the first officer today is Officer Stephen Yoakum. He's been with APD since July 2008, and he's currently assigned to the Northwest Area Command. Joining him on stage today in a few minutes will be his, his family. He's been married to Nicole for nine years. Uh, they have a son, Lucas, who's eight years old. A daughter, Sophia, nicknamed Pia, I believe. Little Pia, uh, who's just five years old. Welcome. And Joseph is one years old, their, young, their youngest son. But they're also expecting their fourth child, so congratulations. All future APD officers, hopefully. <laughs> Start recruiting early, we can't go wrong. So um, Stevens a known firearms specialist. Uh, he earned a certification in the German military, and he uses his expertise to help others in our department. In March 2018, Officer Joachim was watching television at home when he saw a tragic story of a family of German tourists traveling through Albuquerque when they had their RV burglarized. Officer Yoakum took it upon himself to call the family directly and offer a comforting voice in their German language. He found that the family had lost their passports and, more importantly, special medical equipment in the burglary. Uh, he offered them his house, and the family stayed with them while recovering from the burglary. Officer Yoakum worked tirelessly all the way off duty to get the medical equipment replaced. He then focused his attention on getting their passports replaced. You can imagine being in a foreign country and losing your passports and, and medical equipment that's vital to the, the child that um, had you know, the medical condition. So he did that on his own time. He actually waited till midnight to call Berlin directly and set up the process for them to replace all the paperwork at Holloman Air Force Base. The family stated they are eternally grateful for Officer Joachim and even have plans for re reuniting with him when he travels back to Germany. Offer Joachim, that's not all. Offer Joachim's name was also brought to the attention of his chain of command again in a very unique way. The Northwest APD staff attended a public safety workshop for the East and West Ladera Neighborhood Associations back on April 25, 2018. At the end of the event, they took a question and answer session. Mr. Mrs. Kimberly Anderson stood up and she wanted to acknowledge one of the Northwest officers. She informed everybody that on November 11, 2017, she got a nail in her tire and was on her way to get it fixed, and the nail came out and the tire went flat. She pulled off the road and was getting ready to change it when Officer Yoakum pulled up to help her. He was not on duty, and he was with his family at the time. When, when Officer Yoakum, again, he was not on duty, he was able to get the flat out, but the problem was the spare was also flat. So he drove his family home, came back in his unit, his APD unit, took her and her flat tire to discount tire to get it fixed. Then took her back to the car, put the tire on for her, and was very courteous and friendly the whole time he was helping her. 
The unique thing about this is no one knew about this, this unsolicited act, until it had been brought to attention by this citizen at a, a meeting. Again, showing that our officers are very humble and, and very much not wanting recognition for the good things they do. Um, his family was very gracious, uh, her, you know, and supportive of Stephen in return to help Kimberly. Obviously, you were with him in the car, and he had to pull over, so sometimes you get called to service as well. But Officer Yoakum and many officers alike conduct themselves in this manner every day, um, never expecting to be acknowledged for, for it, but simply knowing that they made someone's life better. They chose to take the time to help others. Um, these incidents are reflected of the type of person Officer Yoakum is, both on duty, but also as well off duty. So please join me today in congratulating Officer Yoakum and his family. slide this direction. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too many. <laughs> recipient is Officer Chris Posha. He's a 13-year veteran officer and is currently assigned to... Don't know if that's me. Okay. Chris is currently assigned to Field Service Bureau in the Northeast Area Command. His family, unfortunately, won't be able to join him today, but they wish they could be here in, in, in his behalf. Uh, he's been married to his wife, Allison, for 16 years. They have a son, Alex, who's 15 years old is currently at New Mexico Military Institute. Uh, his daughter Bella is 11 years old. The youngest son is Jack, nine years old. Uh, Chris is known as a man who's devoted his career to helping children. He is an active duty first sergeant with the New Mexico National Guard. He served eight years with the Marine Corps, where he, among other things, he was deployed to Iraq in 2003 and with Delta Company, 4th Recon Battalion, U.S. Marines. And in 2012, he was deployed with Charlie Company, New Mexico National Guard to Egypt to help maintain peace on the Gaza Strip. A recent event which highlights his character happened on Friday, May 18th, 2018. Officer Posha was taking calls for service just like any other day when he was dispatched to a disturbance call. He arrived and made contact with a 13-year-old boy who was having an argument with his mother at a Motel 6. Officer Posha was quickly able to assist and defuse the situation which was basically a young teenager struggling with his relationship with his single mother. Officer Posha discovered that the family had moved to Albuquerque from Texas, fleeing a very difficult situation back there. She was now living in this small hotel room with her six children, ranging in age from 1 to 21. Clearly, this was contributing to the issue at hand with her son. Officer Posha probed more and discovered that the family had no resources, no help, no money, most importantly, no food. The room was cramped, but it was very clean and organized, and there was no alcohol or drugs visible. Officer Posher then took it upon himself to make several calls to find assistance for this family. He contacted CYFD to help have them arrive and help on scene that night, to immediately begin that process to assist the family with resources. He called out to his squad mates, and in doing so was able to organize food from McDonald's that night for dinner and job interviews for two of the oldest children who were looking for work on Monday. Most impressive is the fact that Officer Posha spent close to $100 of his own personal money and went grocery shopping for the family, ensuring that they had food and soap until the services from CYFD uh, could, could begin. Officer Posha truly went beyond the call of duty of a, what was a standard disturbance call and turned it into an incredibly un unselfish and kindness act of care. 
Please help me in congratulating Officer Posher. Last recipient, Officer Vincente Martinez. Officer Martinez joined the Albuquerque Police Department on April 25, 2009. He's currently assigned to Field Service Bureau in the Southwest Area Command. Joining him on his stage tonight today will be his wife, Lisa. Uh, they've been married 15 years. They have two children, Vincente Jr., who's 14, and Zoe, who's seven. Vincente epitomizes the spirit of this award. He is known as a hard worker, and for his fundraising endeavors that have benefited all those in need in the department with a special focus on first responders. He's always willing to help out his fellow man, whether they are families of police officers, dispatchers, firefighters, or anyone, anyone else in the community for that matter. He's a trustworthy man. Everyone from officers, supervisors, family, or the public know that they can rely on him. Vincente felt that he could help people by holding what's called Frito Pie fund fundraisers, and many of you have made, seen this you know, throughout the department. We've all enjoyed those. He started with his first fundraising event in 2014 to raise money for the family of a police officer who was in need. He helped officers who had gotten injured or had medical issues as well as family members who were in need. Very quickly, he expanded out to communications, AP, AFD, and most recently he hosted a fundraiser at the Southwest substation for the family of a young girl who was murdered. The family is still in contact with Vincente and is very appreciative of his caring heart. Although they suffered a great loss, they now have a, a friend in APD. Vincente and his family have paid for their own food, their food supplies with their own money since day one. They reluctantly will still take donations, however, to get food, but not often. In 2016, he was hosting a fundraiser almost every month. This is on top of all his other duties, family obligations, and often he would come into work right after these events. He has also pitched in his own money to round up the dollar amount when, when needed. His success was quickly learned and the requests have begun coming in in overwhelming num numbers. His peers had to tell him, hey, take a break, <laughs> you know, you're doing a lot. If it wasn't for that, he would host a fundraiser for everyone. Vincente and his family are truly phenomenal. Vincente has made a profound and poignant difference in the lives of many who have been in need. For that, from the first fundraising event through today, Officer Martinez has raised over 74000 for those in need. Vincente, if you and your family could come on stage and let's give them a hand. I just want to add one more thing in, in Vicente's behalf. He was our 2017 Uniformed Officer of the Year. So I think we should probably give him another round for that as well. So. I 
I, a little story about that night. Um, Vincente was supposed to come for his award. I'm going to embarrass you. Um, he went out and took calls for service, and we had to find him and make some calls, show up and receive your award. So it just shows the dedication and the commitment that some of our officers have, and we do thank you. I mean, it, it's great lunches and great camaraderie when you, you set those up, and I think that's a great, great spirit for everybody to follow and emulate. So as you've seen today, you've just seen a small sampling of what our officers are capable of doing. You guys are entering this career, and you can see that you can make it. The best part about this is you get to do that every day. You can make a difference in people's life. And these officers have made a difference in many people's lives. So this is what the job's about, and it's up to you to finish the academy. And we welcome you when you come out because we need you tremendously. The citizens of Albuquerque need you. So, folks, thanks for being here and supporting our officers. I don't know if we have any concluding remarks. I don't think the mic's working anyway, but um, I just want to give a special thanks to our Citizens Police Academy alumni. They set up everything in the classroom, the food and the drinks, so please stick around and enjoy some of that. Talk to the people with the Daniels Fund. Uh, they'll talk to you all day long about who Bill Daniels was. And for everybody else in the room, look up who Bill Daniels was. He was an honorable man, and he left a legacy that honors people like this, the police officers that live their lives with that character and leadership and service to community. So uh, just one more time, give a round of applause to everybody.